feels good today. Let's go for a walk. Okay, puppy? Our lungs do several things. One is they provide oxygen for our whole body from head to toe. Number two, they also help us get rid of waste like germs and carbon monoxide. They also provide the air for speech. Without being able to breathe deeply, the ability to speak would be very different. Without sufficient oxygen, the whole body and brain become weak, feeble, and prone to disease. If you've ever met someone with congestive obstructive pulmonary disease, pneumonia, or other diseases of the lungs and witnessed their inability to take a deep breath and seen how the disease affects their ability to function, then you can appreciate the ability to breathe deep people suffering these diseases find it difficult to do even simple things like getting dressed. Activities you and I take for granted are hard and painful for them. So how does a corset affect the lungs? A corset pushes some of the organs of the middle of the body, like the liver and the diaphragm, up into the chest cavity, where the lungs, the stomach, and the heart belong. They have to go somewhere, and that is what happens. As the ribs are pushed together by the corset, everything moves further up making less room for the lungs, heart, and stomach. Consumption, a wasting disease, and tuberculosis are diseases that we don't hear much about today. I find it interesting that consumption became almost unknown after corsets were no longer used. These two diseases are very closely related. Here is a medical explanation of how tuberculosis can begin. The corset, with its inflexible stays and hourglass shape, grasps the expanding lungs at their lower part like an iron vise and prevents their proper filling with air. The lungs are thus crowded up into the upper part of the chest and are pressed against the projecting edges of the first ribs, upon which they move to and fro with the act of breathing. The friction thus produced occasions a constant irritation of the upper portion of the lungs, which induces a deposit of tuberculosis matter, and the individual becomes a prey to that dreaded disease. What can happen when the lungs are cramped by a corset? Here's what happened to one woman in Paris in the 1800s. At the Hotel du, the great hospital at Paris, a young girl of 18 lately presented herself to Brichette for his advice. On the right side of her throat, she had a tumor of variable size, but never larger than one's fist. It reached from the collarbone as high as the thyroid cartilage, which is your Adam's apple. When pressed downward, it wholly disappeared. But as soon as the pressure was removed, it was indolent, soft, and elastic. It was observed to be largest when the chest was tightly laced with corsets. In short, by placing the ear on it, the murmur of respiration could be heard in the tumor, which proves that a protrusion of the lungs had taken place, or, in other words, that the poor girl had been laced so tightly that her lungs, having no longer sufficient space in their natural position, were squeezed out of it and were forcing their way up along the neck. I brought a little balloon to show you what we're talking about. This is about the size of 
her tumor, maybe a little bit smaller than my fist. And it was right about here. And when she would exhale, it would go away. When she would inhale, it would come up and then it would go back down. And it would come up when she would inhale again. And when she'd exhale, it would go back down. I don't know about you, but I like breathing. Are you for her? <laughs> Without sufficient lung capacity, my dog wouldn't be able to run very far. She wouldn't be able to play. Good girl. Yeah, she's good doggy. Hmm. Oh, and one final thought. I don't know whether the damage is reversible. You might want to think about it. <laughs>